kindness. Amen. And I'm certainly good to us and really thankful to him for his many blessings. Amen. Amen. And we honor all of the elders and she on this morning. All of the deacons, saints of God, and visiting friends. Amen. And it's such a blessing to be saved. Amen. Amen. And I thank you. Uh, the condition of the world and where we could be. I have a great appreciation for my salvation. Amen. 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 God has done a wonderful thing for us. And not because we are so deserving and so good, but because of his great love, his mercy that he has bestowed upon us. Amen. Amen. We give him honor and do his name on this morning. Uh, he is worthy to be praised. Amen. 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 He is a great God of all gods. Amen. We thank you this morning because he rules in our lives. And I trust today that you've been blessed with this week of God. Amen. Amen. I don't think there's anyone that's worthy of you to say that God has not been good to us. Amen. 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 Um, I realize we don't deserve it. Uh, we can never, ever earn the goodness of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. But yet, at our worst, God has still been good to us. Amen. We're grateful to Him for uh, those many blessings that He has shared upon us. I want to call your attention this morning, as I was thinking on last evening. On this message, and uh, on this morning, as I was considering uh, listening to the voice of God, what God will have us to say uh, to us, uh, the Spirit of the Lord reminded me to revisit a past sermon uh, that we had a talk on Friday, on a Friday night. And I wanted to be into the Spirit of God. And he knows what we need more than I do. Amen. Amen. I'm just simply here as a spokesman for him. Amen. Uh, it's he who will have to do the speaking for us on this morning. And I should be coming from the Gospel of John, the 18th chapter, first Timothy chapter 6. Some of you may remember this message. It's still very fresh. In my heart and mind. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate said unto him, 
what is true? And when he had said this, he, ended, uh, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him at all. Amen. I wanted to speak to us on this morning again on the subject, kingdom living. Amen. Amen. Kingdom living. Amen. Living in God's kingdom. Now, I think the Lord impressed uh, upon me this message again uh, because we as believers that are saved need to clearly understand our position in this world and to whom we belong. Amen. Since we're not in this world, we have to have some place that we identify with. Yeah. Uh, the Bible said we are strangers and pilgrims passing through this land. We're not of this world. So we have to find some place that we can call our home or where we belong. Amen. And that is in the kingdom of God. Amen. So today I want to talk to us about, and I want to have your attention as much as possible, on the subject kingdom living. Amen. How to live in the kingdom. Amen. Uh, as we look in the government system of our society and our world. There are various forms of government. Uh, you have democracies, you have monarchies, you have dictatorships, uh, you have a variety of different forms of government. And God has a form of government as well. Praise the Lord. And God's government form is a theocratic government. Amen. Amen. Government by, this is ruled by, or governed by a God. And regarded as the ruling power. Yeah, this is a theocracy. Yeah. Amen. And this is in conformity with Isaiah 9 and 6. Amen. That the government should be upon his shoulders. Amen. Uh, so he has his own form of government. Amen. Uh, and because of this, the church, which is the part of the kingdom of God, uh, is not ruled and does not function as other governments, a form of governments in our society. Amen. God's kingdom is not ruled by a democracy where the majority rule or where folks are taken uh, to establish uh, leadership. Amen. Praise the Lord. But it is a theocracy. Amen. It is ruled by God himself. Amen. 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 The word kingdom. Uh, it's important that we understand what a kingdom is. Uh, if we're going to talk about kingdom living, we need to understand what kind of living we're talking about. We're talking about kingdom living. Kingdom is a government, a county, a state, or a population that is normally or uh, actually ruled by a king. Amen, man. This is called a kingdom. A kingdom is a place where the king rules. Amen. Amen. So we as believers, the Bible says that we, when we're born again of the water and of the spirit, we're born into the kingdom of God. Amen. Right. Amen. So that puts us into the kingdom of God. We're part of this kingdom. Where the king rules, yes, Amen. where he is supreme. The king, uh, be it a, a male monarch, uh, one that is the most powerful or eminent of a particular group. Uh, you hear the uh, king of the beast, which is the lion. Uh, you have different kings of that which is uh, most powerful in any particular group. It is regarded as a king of that particular group, a population, whatever you're speaking of. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ is King of Kings. Amen. So by right he has a kingdom uh, where he rules as supreme. And the king is sovereign. Praise the Lord. Which means he has supreme power and is self-governing. He is sovereign. His power is unlimited. He has no one to answer to. No one to take advice from. Amen. He is sovereign. He does what he wants to do. Amen. He demands what he desires. Amen. There's no one who can challenge his authority. Amen. Because he is sovereign. Amen. There's no power to turn to once he has spoken. Because he is sovereign. Amen. He is self-governing. His decisions come within himself. Amen. He has no counselors yes. because he is sovereign. Amen. He has all power in heaven and earth. Amen. And there's nothing he cannot do because he is sovereign. Amen. And because he is sovereign, his word, his actions and desires should go unquestioned. Amen. Because he 
is sovereign. Amen. In our democracy, in our judicial system, particularly in other forms of government, if you're not pleased with what uh, a decision or a certain action, you can always appeal to a higher power. Government is set up that way. Uh, it called checks and balances. And you in our, so in our judicial system, you can go all the way up to the Supreme Court. Amen. Amen. If you don't like the decision handed down by the appellate court, you can go to the state Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. You don't like that, you can go to this uh, uh, to the Supreme Court of the United States. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the, uh, one court has the authority to overrule the judgment or decision of a law court. But with God, there is no one who can overrule Amen. Amen. anything he says. Amen. Amen. There's no one who can change any decision he makes. Amen. Amen. Because he is sovereign. Amen. I'm convinced here this morning that there are many people who do not believe that the God they claim to serve is sovereign. Uh, do not, they do not allow him to be sovereign in their lives. Uh, Sometimes we as servants and subjects, uh, in that those who live in a kingdom are called subjects or servants. Amen. Subject is one who is under the authority of another. <coughs> And I think that very aptly describes every child of God. Amen. Amen. We are subjects of God. Amen. Amen. We are his subjects. Amen. Amen. David said we are his people, Amen. the sheep of his pasture. Yes. Uh, we are the subjects of his kingdom. Amen. And being a part of the kingdom, we have to understand that there is a certain thing and uh, deal with kingdom living that we have to understand that when it comes to God, he being sovereign. There's nothing that he uh, can be overruled in. Amen. His decision, even in our individual lives, cannot be overturned, even by our own self. Amen. 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 Though we at times may not uh, understand all that he does and wants to do with us, because he is sovereign, there's nothing we can do about it. Amen. Amen. And when God decides to do something, who is it who can say to him, no? Amen. What hand can stand there and hold back his hands? He is sovereign. Amen. He's all powerful, almighty, all knowing. He's present everywhere. Amen. He is a sovereign God. There's nowhere you can go to get out of his presence. Amen. There's nowhere you can go to hide from you have the Holy Ghost, wherever you are, God is there. Amen. Because he abides in you. Amen. There's nothing you can say that he doesn't hear. Amen. There's nothing you can think that he doesn't know. Amen. In fact, he knows it before you think it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's nothing you can do in secret that you can hide from his face Amen. or from his eyes. He's sovereign. I mean, he knows everything. Amen. He knows what you're going to do 10 years from now. If Amen. 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 There's nothing that's hid from him. No wonder the, the, psalm, the psalmist says, Amen, how great thou art. Amen. Now, this is the God that I'm going to talk about this morning. Our King. Praise the Lord. Amen. My King. My master, Amen. my ruler, Amen. him to whom I owe everything. Amen. And as a king, a king should always be praised, Amen. honored, Amen. worshipped, Amen. bowed down to. 
most severe trial of my life. Amen. Amen. Because I don't have the ability to see you to tomorrow. Amen. But the king that I serve, be it all knowing, he knows what tomorrow is going to bring to you. Amen. Even now, beloved, you know whether or not tomorrow you're going to have a trial or a test. Amen. You know whether or not you're going to have a temptation. Amen. Amen. You know whether or not you're going to have heartache tomorrow. Amen. He knows that a snare of the enemy is laying for you tomorrow. Yes, he knows that the evil that we part of history for tomorrow, and by being all wise, amen, he makes preparation today to deliver you tomorrow. Amen. Amen. So when you live in the kingdom of God, you, you don't have to worry about tomorrow. Yes, you don't have to worry about the snares that are laid for you. Amen. You don't even have to worry about what you're going to eat tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Because the king looks out for all of our needs. He stands prepared because he is sovereign. He knows everything. And that's reassuring to me. He knows everything. Amen. So that tells me that the enemy can't bring nothing against me that he doesn't know is coming. Amen. 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 You know, the Bible says that the eyes go to and before the earth, yes. beholding the good and the evil. Amen. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. Amen. His eyes goes to and before the earth, beholding the good and the evil. If God looks over this world, he sees all the evil that's going to come against you. Amen. And he knows today whether tomorrow you're going to be able to take that test. Amen. So if you can't take that test, he starts today telling you, well, child, I want you to fast tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And that's why I was like, Lord, I don't know why. You can say sometimes, you know, the Lord will lay my heart and fast tomorrow, and I don't know why. You know why? You know why? Because you're not sorry. Amen. Amen. You don't know what you need tomorrow. Amen. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. Don't you dare go to sleep on me this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You don't know what you're going to face tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Life turns on a dime. Amen. Tomorrow your little world might be turned upside down. Amen. All your Amen. finances gone, your health gone, your loved one gone, Amen. your job gone, <laughs> children gone. Amen. Amen. We just don't know. You may go home today and find nothing but the chimney standing there. Amen. Listen, our God, he sees the good and the evil. Amen. He has his way that when something is going to come, he tells you today, all right, tomorrow, we'll just pass. Amen. 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 You don't know why, but he sees the evil that's coming. Amen. Amen. So he prepares you so that when tomorrow comes, then you finally say, well, so that's why he wanted you to pass. Praise the Lord. Amen. Talk about the God I serve. He's Listen, the Bible tells us that one time we were not always in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. There was a time we were the servants of sin. Amen. Praise the Lord. There are two kingdoms. Either you're part of the kingdom of God or the kingdom of the devil. Amen. There's no <coughs> neutral ground. Amen. It's one or the other. And when we were in sin, we were the servants of sin. Amen. We serve sin. A servant is one who is employed in the service of others. Amen. Who bear to do their biddings. And the life that we lived, though there were a amount of, of choice, but you had no power to do differently. Amen. So you serve sin because you were a servant of sin. We were sin by nature. Romans, will you brother, turn to Romans chapter 6 for me, if you will. Romans 6, verse 17 through 23. Here we have two kingdoms. There was a time before you were saved, you were in the kingdom of Satan. Amen. You were his servant. You had no choice. You were born into his kingdom. Amen. Just as you're born into the kingdom of God, you were born into the kingdom of Satan. Amen. And we were the servants of sin. Amen. Because Satan was the God and the king of this world, he ruled and his servants obeyed his commands. But well, listen, Paul said in Romans chapter 6, verse 17 through 23, please. But God be thanked. Listen. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin. Speaking now to believers who are now in the kingdom of God, who has come out of the kingdom of Satan, are the servants of sin. But God be thanked Amen. that you were times past, not now. Amen. If you serve sin now, it's by choice. Amen. By being in the kingdom of God, you have a choice. You have the power and the authority to choose whether 
someone had to be a master. Amen. So I was said to Jesus one time, Master. He said, you call me master. And so I am. Yeah. And you know what a master is? Amen. That's the one who rules over somebody else. Yes. Amen. Amen. He is our master. Amen. Another case they called him Lord. Amen. He said, well, why call me Lord and don't do what I say? Amen. 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 And Lord is a ruler. Yes. And every time he said, Lord, you were saying, my ruler. Amen. My master. So you got to watch what you're saying. Amen. When you say, Lord Jesus, you're talking about, Lord Jesus is my master. He's my Lord. He's the one that rules over me. Amen. Jesus said, if you call me Lord and Master, why don't you do what I say? Amen. That's what the psalm says. Amen. He said, you say, I'm your shepherd. Follow me. Amen. You say, I'm your Lord. Why don't you follow me? Amen. If I'm your master, why don't you do what I tell you to do? Amen. What served the devil who would question? His master's orders. Amen. You know, that can cost you your job. Amen. Amen. A lot of folks have lost their job because they say, I don't do floors. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 A lot of folks have been fired for insubordination. Right. Amen. 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 He says, I want you to live holy. Amen. Well, Lord, I can't. He says, I want to tell you to do something you can't do. Amen. I will give you the power to live holy. Amen. Amen. I want you to love your enemy. Amen. Amen. All I can is, yes, you can. I'm going to give you the power to love even your enemy. Amen. It's easy to love your, your brother, your sister, those who are nice to you. Amen. It's easy to love somebody who will agree with them than you want to do. He said, now you're in the kingdom of God, and I want you to even love your enemy. I want you to do good to those who despite the you. He said, now you're in my kingdom, I don't want you to resemble that kingdom out there. Amen. So in this kingdom, he said, I'm going to decide what you are to wear. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Just our Thank you, Lord. He is sovereign. Amen. Amen. Is he sovereign? Amen. Amen. And if he chooses to tell you, I want you to wear all black, he's sovereign. Amen. You just got to go about all black. Amen. 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 I'll tell you what to do. Amen. I'll tell you what not to do. Amen. I'll make the decisions. I'm the master. I'm sovereign. Well, I don't see no reason. You don't need to see. You don't need a reason. Amen. Who are you to ask God for a reason? Amen. Amen. Who are we to question his judgments? Amen. To question his decisions? He simply said, because I say so. When they told Moses, they go down and tell Pharaoh, let my people go, Moses, when they go off, who should I tell them to? He said, just tell them I am. Amen. That's all. Just tell them I am sent you. Amen. Moses didn't understand that. What you need to tell Pharaoh, I am? But that's all he needed was to say, I am. Amen. Moses didn't understand it. Pharaoh didn't understand it. Even the patriarch didn't understand it. But in his last days, he had revealed to us who I am is. Amen. Well, Jesus said before Abraham was, I am. Amen. Amen. He didn't reveal what he tell us. He said, don't question me. Just do what I've said. Yes, you know, some parents, yeah, I'm talking about real parents now, Amen. Amen. don't allow their children to question That's right. their judgment. Amen. Amen. That's right. See, now I know what some of y'all are thinking. I ain't raising my child like that. I want my child to express it. That's what's wrong with a lot of them. They're expressing themselves. And they're dying early. They're going to jail early. They're breaking hearts early because they learn to express themselves. God simply says, when I speak, that's something you don't argue with me. You don't ask me for a reason. I owe you a reason. If I decide to give you one, that's my prerogative. If 
Luke chapter 6. Dear Simon, my kingdom is in the kingdom of God. There's one king. There's one supreme. Yes, amen. He's king of kings. Amen. Lord of lords. Yes, amen. He is sovereign. Amen. His judgments, his past finding out, his will should be unquestioned. Amen. That which I don't understand, as I follow on and follow him, he will open my understanding. Amen. But I gotta follow in humble submission. Amen. Even that which I don't like. And there's a lot of things in this kingdom we don't like. Amen. Oh, and I'm not talking about you either. Oh, there's a lot of things. If I could change it, have my way, if God would let it, I'll change a lot of things. Amen. Amen. That's what the flesh wants. Amen. But I've learned over the years that since he knows what's best, he better not trust my judgment. Amen. 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 That's right. Folks say sometimes, well, I'm going to explain. It's a bad day.
You're born again of water and of the Spirit. You cannot see the kingdom of God. You can say, how can man be born again when he's old? Can he have a second time with his mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, you be the ruler of Israel and know not these things. The wind blow where it listen to not, know it not, but it's coming where it's going. Yeah. He said, but I said to you, mom or not, you must be born again. Yeah. Except you're born again, water and of the spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. You must experience the new birth. You must repent of your sins. A change of mind, a change of direction. A mind that turned from sin and turned to God. A mind that surrendered your whole life to Him. A mind to regret the past life you lived. Yeah. And be baptized in water, according to Acts 2 and 38. In the name of Jesus Christ, it's for remission, the part release of all of your sins. Amen. All the sins you were born in, that you commit for this time, covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Cleanse you. Then He push you into the kingdom. God. And they become his servants. He become our master, our Lord, our King, Amen. our everything. Amen. And he promised that I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. Amen. I will not only be with you, but I will dwell in you. Amen. And living waters spring up with the everlasting life. Amen. I'll be a refreshing stream in the time of your despair. In the time of your sickness, I'll be there to stand by your side. In the time of need, I'll be your need supply. When the storm and tides of life have washed out your connection to everything else, I'll be a bridge over the floor. I'll be a shelter in the time of storm. And all you have to just call me. I'm always in here. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So that's something you must do. You've got to repent of your sins. You have to be baptized in water in Jesus' name, according to Acts 2 38. I promise you, with feed with the gift of the Holy Ghost, you can rise to walk in the newness of life. Amen. And we have water today. We are clothed for men and women. <coughs> today, you can become a part of the kingdom of God. You can come today repenting of your sins. And you can be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. And God promise you to wash away your sins, <coughs> and you promise to feed with the gift of the Holy Ghost. We have water. We are clothed for men and women. Glory.